Hello everyone, I'm Laura Cornish, Editor-in-Chief of Mining Review Africa, coming to you from Mining in Darba 2022. I am joined this morning by Warren Beach. Warren is the CEO of Beach Feldman, and as you know, very recognized in the industry. Warren, thank you for being here with me today. Thank you very much. So Warren, you get around Africa a lot. You've done a lot of deals and work in Africa. Give me your view on the top three performing countries from a mining perspective in Africa. Personal choice always by taking into account a number of factors, including how busy we are. Um, for me, Namibia, definitely top of the pile at the moment and for various reasons. Uh, Namibia, I still enjoy working and doing very, very well. Still performing very, very well. Ghana uh, sometimes doesn't get the recognition it deserves, but Ghana certainly performing. And with the whole ECOWAS and, and the gold deposits being so accessible, cost effectiveness, that area, West Africa is doing very well, but I like Ghana. And uh, possibly uh, Tanzania is certainly on the radar. It, it, it's back on the radar with all of the changes, um, you know, changing the president. So that's back on the radar and, and, a, and a good jurisdiction to do work if all the changes that are meant to come through after John Magufuli do come through, it'll be a very good jurisdiction again. I like your views on Tanzania, as you know, it's, uh, I think it's up and coming, right? We're going to see if, if the president keeps those positive movements in place. It's, it's, it's only going to be on a, on a growth trajectory. Absolutely. So she made a number of changes almost straight away, uh, but the John Magufuli policies cast a long shadow. Um, two key changes that weren't, she hasn't been able to undo yet is the taxation side, the, the higher taxations, and obviously the, the, the revenue authority, the Tanzanian revenue authority and their ability to seize assets still makes people incredibly nervous. Okay. Yeah. So if she can get that sorted out, but it's a long shadow. Okay. Um, if you can get that, hurdles. A few more hurdles, if she gets that sorted out, it'll be good. Right. Warren, let's flip this conversation. Let's look at your most or your top three underperforming countries in Africa. And it's quite challenging generally because Africa has been underperforming as a continent. Uh, always difficult to pick a few, but they, some, there's some that are disappointing and some are more disappointing than others. Zimbabwe, there was a lot of uh, hope after the, the, re, the regime change, or change in, in the president. There was hope that Zimbabwe would now open up and, and do rightfully so. I mean, it's got amazing reserves. It hasn't performed as it should have, and it doesn't. Certainly to me, it doesn't look as if it's going to perform well in the next two, three, four years. It's, it's going to be a while. A um, other, couple of under, other countries, Guinea, because of their coup last year, um, were starting to do very well again because they've got fantastic reserves, but a coup makes investors nervous. If you, if you have a regime change through a coup, it makes people uh, very, very nervous. Um, and then again, West Africa, Burkina Faso, Mali now with, you know, with, with everything going on in Mali, safety and security, it makes people nervous. So most of the underperforming countries have had safety and security issues. So, Warren, what do countries do to reverse that, that challenge? You know, if you've got safety and security issues, it's not going to change overnight. I mean, are we talking, this is now a threat to that country for the next few years? Do, does it take that long for an, an investor to regain confidence if they are actually able to sort that out? No, not necessarily. I mean, risk tolerance, uh, you know, changes. So, a couple of years ago, we'd say it would take five years before that confidence comes back. It comes back a lot quicker now okay. because of demand. All of those countries have got safe haven gold. All of those countries have got battery minerals. We need it now. So the horizon of safety or the tolerance of the safety risk changes the time horizon now. Okay. It, it's a lot quicker. So a lot more investors change their tune quite quickly now if they need what's in the ground. Okay, well at least that's a positive. <laughs> it is. So Warren, we're here at Mining in Darba. It's in South Africa. You haven't mentioned South Africa as a top Yes. performer or an underperformer, where does South Africa sit on your scale? So again, probably disappointing on, on the disappointing end of the scale. And it doesn't matter what institute rates us and where we are. The reality is what's happening here. Um, the illegal mining is growing. It is of severe concern. I mean, it is really growing. So the illegal mining sector is impacting significantly on South Africa, putting a lot of concern, uh, again, investor concern. So. <laughs> The, at least we've had some stability, so the mining charter dispute has been dealt with, um, no changes to the MPRDA in that at the moment, so there is a bit of stability and that's nice. But to get applications through the DMRE, 
Um, COVID or no COVID, uh, you know, even if even if everything stopped tomorrow, the time it's taking is just unacceptable to get there. And it's money in, you know, people have to put money in. And they're sitting there and at some stage there has to be returned. And that application process is simply too long. Does the mineralogy in South Africa not uh, take away some of that risk with regards to investment, like you're saying, for the rest of Africa? What What is that? Is that investment appetite going to be there? Does South Africa have the minerals that, that's going to take that risk away maybe a little bit? Absolutely. And that's why we're still seeing the investment levels we're seeing. Um, I mean, obviously, the South African mining industry performed well during COVID. I mean, there were windfall taxes and, and, and all of that. So it's still performing very well. So the risk is it's de-risked to some extent and because we've got such good reserves. So, yes, we'll always be an investable destination. The risk profile is changing, though. Fantastic. At least we can walk away with a positive message for South Africa, Warren. No, we, we have to. We hear. Yeah, I mean, we have to. We have to be positive, positive. and it's also very nice, you know, particularly on the coal side with all the transactions that have happened there to Sariti. Um, it's nice seeing it all being bedded down at, at a senior level. And it's also very nice seeing what's happening at the the junior space, the you know, the junior, junior, and the mid tier. It's, it's nice to see that happening. Um, and coal's dirty, and everybody doesn't like to be in it, but it's here to stay for us for a long time. Um, and and that whole that whole conversation around the transition for coal is good, and there's commitment. And uh, I've enjoyed those transactions because it has consolidated coal in South Africa to a large extent. Okay, Warren, it's always great to chat to you. Contextualise Africa so nicely for me. So thank you for the time taken this morning to chat to me. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thanks again for watching. Please visit www.miningreview.com for more videos from Mining in Darbar 2022. Cheers.